Hi guys, Guess Semi here. So today I want to talk about the link between genetics and gum disease. Now the inspiration for this video was a consultation that I had with a patient a few weeks ago. And a lot of my patients who come to see me, they've got their own dentists and who they've been seeing for ages and ages, but they come to me specifically for something cosmetic. Maybe they've seen some of my videos on my website or whatever. But this patient had a lot of gum disease around their teeth, which means that the bone was being eaten away around their teeth and and there was a lot of swelling that some of the teeth were loose and, and we were getting problems like that. Now, through the consultations or the conversations that this patient had had with their own dentist, he was very aware that there's a link between gum disease and genetics. And he'd been told that his genetics were part cause of the reason that he's got gum disease. And this led to a feeling of helplessness. He, he kind of felt that, you know, there wasn't any point in doing anything because he's got this problem, he's got this condition, he's got these genetics which he can't change, and therefore he's going to get all of this gum disease disease so there's almost no no point in trying to to save himself or save the teeth now this has been misunderstood and uh, I really want to explain why that even if you have uh, a genetic predisposition to getting gum disease whereas some of your your friends may not get gum disease in the same instance let me show you what actually causes gum disease and then we can look at how, you, how everyone can actually stop gum disease okay so this is a, a lower tooth and around the tooth we've got this gum which comes down like that and then we have bone which is a little bit darker so the first thing that happens if you stop brushing your teeth is that you get bacteria build up around the neck of the tooth here and these bacteria in the early days within the first sort of day or so they're not really the kind of harmful bacteria which cause gum disease but if this bacteria is left to, to accumulate and mature, what happens is it changes into a nasty bacteria and that takes a couple of days to happen. And these nasty bacteria then infiltrate their toxins into the, into the gum there. Now, your body knows that this is, this is nasty stuff, so your body is going to start fighting the, the bacteria here. And we've got this like battle zone where we've got all this bacteria producing all their toxins here, and then we've got your body trying to fight things off there. And this is what causes gum inflammation. So this is the first stage of gum disease. If everyone stopped brushing their teeth, almost everyone would start getting gums which bleed easily. So this is the earliest stage of gum disease, and this is what's happening. So what happens after that is if this remains and the, this bad bacteria here is still not cleaned off, it starts affecting the bone. Okay, now this happens in roughly 70% of people. Okay, the, the bone is going to get inflammation and then the bone actually starts reducing down and down the tooth. And once you start losing bone, it's almost impossible to rebuild that. There, are, there is things that you can do, um, but nothing is going to be as good as your original bone. Now, this complicates things in, in a number of ways because I'm going to just draw this section zoomed in so we can see exactly what's going on here. Okay, so we've got the tooth here, then we've got the, the gum here and the, the bone here, and we've got this nasty bacteria which is kind of building up here, which is producing all of these toxins, which is going into the gum, and some of it's going down into the bone. Now, what's happened over time is that this gum, even though it used to be up here, has shrunk down, okay? And this bone, which used to be like that okay it's a, there's normally a little gap between the bone and the tooth it used to be like that the the level of this bone has gone from the attachment of this bone has gone from there to there so it's gone down and then what you have is this this area here which if we were to put an instrument down here which is which is what we do that is what we call a pocket Okay, so the instrument, go, if it goes down more than about two millimeters, it means that there's a, a pocket and there's been some gum disease. Now, this creates a difficulty because this area of the, um, the inflammation is moved from up here, 
where you can actually do something about it, you can brush it really easily, but the battle zone now between the bacteria and, um, and, and your body is down here, it's hidden at the bottom of this pocket, and that's what makes things a lot, a lot more difficult. So it's important to realize that this whole process is the same for everyone. Even those people who, who don't get gum disease initially, people who, um, who, who are more resilient to it, this is the same process that happens with them and it's the same process that happens to those people who are more vulnerable to gum disease. So this might be because of genetics, it may be because of smoking, might be because of diabetes, badly controlled diabetes. All of these things can influence your body's reaction to that harmful bacteria. So remember, the toxins come in and your body tries to fight them. But some people are less good at fighting these, these toxins. So the real cause of gum disease is the bacteria. And things like genetics and smoking and diabetes and a whole bunch of other things, these things modify the way that the body can fight the bacteria. But without the bacteria there in the first place, you wouldn't get the gum disease. So dentists call bacteria the, the primary etiological factor. So that's just a posh way of saying that if you didn't have this bacteria, you wouldn't get gum disease. So that's why it's so critical to, to really keep all surfaces of the teeth clean because when you're brushing your teeth it's really easy to brush the outside of the teeth but it's very easy to miss in between the teeth and especially if you've got pockets down the bottom of the pockets. Now this is why some of my patients when they come and see me and they've got gum disease the first thing I say is hey look go and see my periodontist who's a specialist in, in gum disease and they spend ages just educating our patients on how to how they can clean their teeth and some of our patients are spending yeah 15 20 minutes a day cleaning their teeth with a whole bunch of different instruments they've got electric toothbrushes they've got tp brushes they've got interdental brushes they've got other little brushes which go down the pocket they've got mouthwashes and all of this kind of stuff because if you can really keep your teeth and your gums clean you will not get gum disease Okay, that, that's literally the bottom line. Now, if all of this doesn't work, there are surgical treatments, there are interventions that the periodontist can do to help keep your, your teeth clean, but this is really just on an individual level. The first thing that we try to do for everyone is the simplest stuff, which is just education on how to keep things clean and what we call non-surgical treatment. So, this basically means cleaning out these deep pockets. We use anesthetic for this because it is pretty uncomfortable normally. And this is different to what you would have done with a hygienist on a regular basis. And hygienists are really, really important in the long-term maintenance of the, the health of your gums. Okay, so I hope you found this video useful. I hope you, you learned something. And if you do suffer with gum disease and you, you felt it was completely hopeless and you're just about to lose your teeth, you know what, I would encourage you to go and see a dentist and a specialist periodontist to, to actually get a, a, a proper opinion to see if you can save your teeth. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video. Take care.